So now the other thing that everybody's probably heard is a couple of myths or that, the synthetic rope just falls to the ground under load. So we got a lot of exposure and experience um, with Warren on the Hunter Canyon Trail and with Jesse Combs on the Seven Mile Rim Trail. And uh, something that kept coming up was winching. So Justin from Factor 55 and Andy show us, you know, all about the winching. They gave us um, a great demo. It's a little longer than normal, but we chapter marked it out so you guys can go to like which part of the chapter of this video you want to see. There's a lot to unpack. And um, yeah, let's get right to it. The Basic, basic guide, guide to Winching. I know some of y'all are totally experts at winching, rigging, all that stuff. I also know some of you have never pulled cable before in your life. So I'll tell you what. So what I think we'll probably do here is we'll probably just start out with what I generally do is a winching basics class. Uh, this is what we call a mid-frame winch. Mid-frame winch in Warren Industries terms is going to be basically uh, a 12,000 pound winch that bolts to a bumper like this with the, with the bumper, with the bolts going into the bumper. Uh, a 10,000 pound winch of which this is, uh, that rating is going to be at the last layer of rope on the drum. So right now there's about probably about five layers of rope stacked up on this winch drum, okay? This is called the drum, okay? You got a motor over here, electric motor in this case, 12 volt. You have what we call our gear train over here, our gear train housing. You have your clutch. This goes into what we call free spool. This is going to be engaged on the other side. Uh, you have your control box. This is where all the brains are. Uh, we use a contactor, which is a very reliable uh, method of controlling a winch. You have your remote control socket with your wired remote. You have 12 foot lead on this guy right here. Uh, this is what we call a fair lead here, this Factor 55 hard anodized fair lead. And then uh, on this we have a what we call a flat link E, okay? Our winches come with a hook. Uh, the hook will have a, a latch on that, safety latch. In this case we've upgraded to the, the Factor 55 fair lead and the, the flat link E. Now that we've seen, you know, the anatomy of a winch, we've learned a little bit about it, let's take a look at the most basic type of winching, the single line pool. The single line pull means going from the winch out to whatever you're pulling or to your anchor point if you're pulling a vehicle. This is engaged, this is freeze pull, and then you just simply pull out your line, okay? We're gonna pull this out. We do this, it's called the worn walk, okay? Oh, don't you move. You stay here. You stay there. The number one most important tool in a recovery is gloves, right? You always want to protect your hands. It can still pick up thorny uh, pieces, sharp rock, anything like that could slide, that rope could slide through your hands and cut your hands. So. Has anybody ever had rope burn? Yeah. Wear your gloves. Wear it your gloves. two seconds, put them on. For, for effect here, we're gonna say Dana is the anchor point, okay? And we'll say that the gladiator here is stuck, which of course would never happen, but uh, so this is what we call a single line pull. It's a single line from one point to another point, okay? Now again, we have about four, four wraps on this drum. We are not near the 10,000 pound pulling capacity right now. This has an automatic four segment cone brake. And what it does is it works like a drum brake. So it pushes out with friction material on the inside of the drum. And it's a full load holding, holding brake. So if this is a 10,000 pound winch, of which it is, that brake will hold 10,000 pounds guaranteed. With synthetic rope, you're going to want to leave at least uh, one layer, that last layer, on the drum. And that's because we don't want it to pull off the, uh, the end of the, the drum. When I'm ready to do my pull, you would go ahead and plug your remote in. This is a simple remote. We've got an in and an out. It's a 12 volt thing. We always say to have the winch, or excuse me, the vehicle running when you are using your winch, right? This is a 12 volt winch. It's pulling 12 volts from the battery. Your alternator is constantly going to be topping off your battery as you use it. Uh, since this is just a demonstration, I'm, I am just gonna say from a safety standpoint, we would never have anybody this close to the winch in an actual pull. What I like to tell people is you should be at least one and a half times away, far away from this winch line as you have line out, okay? Because if in the unlikely event of a rope failure, we don't want anybody to get hit by anything whipping. Uh, we would also put a winch damper on here. So 
You can use a bag, you can use a strap. Our Epix, actually, it's, you know, this could go around here, for example, and dangle off, off of the rope. So uh, a single line pole is great for most things. You're gonna wanna get most of your rope off to get as close as you can to that 10,000 pound mark if you've got a really long, difficult pull. Now, if you don't have uh, a whole lot of space and you need to double your pulling capacity, we have that ability with a device we call a snatch block. All right guys, so we just looked at the most basic type of winching and that's the single line pull. Very simple, point A to point B. But sometimes you need to be able to pull more weight and you do that with a specific tool called the snatch block. When you're using like a soft shackle or synthetic winch line, the synthetic winch line is made out of ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. Polyethylene, high molecular weighted poly, Wait, ultra high weight ultra molecular polyethylene. It's an ultra high weight rated, so ultra high weight molecular polyethylene. Ethylene or ethylene? <laughs> <laughs> ethylene. Let's, go, let's watch. Let's take a look. <laughs> ultra high molecular weight polyethylene is self lubricating. The fibers are self lubricating, so it's made out of a high modulus plastic. So what it does is it acts as the bearing in the pulley. So once you end, once you put your rigging through here, the soft shackle will then begin to act as the bearing in this pulley system. Uh, but with this pulley, that's so unique about it is we actually machined a larger inner radius. So that way when this is attached to something, the legs of the soft shackle don't pinch on the sides of the pulley, eliminating more friction, and then also having this patented feature to have these little rubber fingers in between here. And what that does is once we set this up to show you is that once the rope goes in here, the rope will rotate and go through those fingers. But when it goes under slack, the rope can't fall out. And so it's super lightweight. Most snatch blocks are super heavy, but if you got synthetic winch line, this is like, that's the key. So with the snatch block, it enables you to double over your line from the point of contact. So it cr basically creates a pulley system. And that pulley system is called the, the double line pull. So what you do with this is you'll take your line and you'll put, put it into these, these little underneath the fingers here. And then you would use a shackle, in this case a soft shackle. You only use soft shackle with these. You go ahead and you, you rig the, uh, the soft shackle up, even with these big Mickey Mouse hand gloves I've got on. Okay, just hold, uh, hold on to that, okay. So you can see what we're doing here, and you'll see it rotate. Just lean into it, there you go. Lean back, there you go. So you can see it rotate like that, okay? So what we'll do now is we'll run this soft shackle to this bow shackle that's on the front of the Jeep. So what we're, what we're seeing here is what we call a double line pull, okay? So as the winch moves, it's going to rotate through the pulley and it's gonna go back, in this case, to the front of the vehicle. So now we have twice the amount of line out as we did last time, okay? But we've also doubled the power, but it also goes half as fast. So twice the rope, half the line speed, double the power. So if you go all the way to that last layer, that last rope, this 10,000 pound winch is gonna pull just under 20,000 pounds. So if you have a winch that's maybe a little undersized, you can do this, this is great. Now, Here's a fun, fun party trick. You can put another snatch block, block on here and then run another line with this line back to your anchor point here. That's a triple line pull, okay? Triple line pull is going to do exactly what a double line pull does, but three times. So now you've got essentially a 30,000 pound winch using three times the rope and is three times slower than a single line speed. So uh, there's all kinds of cool things you can do with this. I have a question. Yeah. Does how does this not come back through there under all that pressure? It just it just the way. It yeah, it's just gonna. The size of the eyelet. The okay. Kind of knot, all that stuff is just not gonna pull out. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. And frankly, this soft shackle needs to be replaced. It's been demonstrated too many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always say when your synthetic rope looks like it needs a haircut, that's when it's time to get a new one. 
So, so far we've learned about the winch and the winch system. We've seen a single line pull. We've checked out Factor 55's really high tech snatch block. We've checked out the double line pull, but what happens if your rope breaks? So in this next segment, we're gonna take a look at rope slicing. It's always good to inspect your gear. The one thing with synthetic winch line, it has a lot of advantages. It's lighter weight, it's easier to use, uh, you can manipulate it, and you can splice it back together if you break it on the trail, which is what we're gonna demonstrate here for you guys. Uh, but it's always good to inspect that rope because when you start to see it, the strands breaking, uh, sun uh, UV damage can really uh, start to affect uh, the rope strength over time. Uh, it's a really good example to always uh, maintain your gear. Um, so one thing, a couple years ago, five, six years ago, we released a tool uh, called our Fast Fit. Now, the Fast Fit is kind of a unique little device. It comes in this little pouch. Um, it comes with a uh, Kellum grip or a wire basket on one end and then also this billet needle on the other. The tool comes together in two pieces, and this is the tool that you can utilize to splice synthetic winch line. You don't ever wanna put a knot in this rope. Knots in the rope create a bite, and that's where the rope will fail, is at that bite point. It's always best to take the rope and, and learn how to splice it and bury it together. You can do it with a big pen and some tape, if that's all that you have on the trail, but this tool makes it a lot more effective to do it. So one thing we wanna show you here, you guys wanna back up just a little bit, just a little bit. I want to, I'm just going to demonstrate just how strong these fibers are, right? So if this were ever to pull across a rock, if, any, if you were ever going to see this go, you know, you, if, or you game around something sharp, the one thing that this rope can't deal with is abrasion. That's the thing that it can't handle, right? So you'll see that most of the time, synthetic rope does not fail all at once. It doesn't usually pop unless it's under really something that's super sharp. But what it will do is when the, the strands start to let go, you'll see that it'll start to, you hear it, right? You'll start to see that what it'll do is when it pops to fail, it'll usually keep and hold on to one or two strands. So even though the, we've already cut through like a few of those, it's still holding the vehicle, right? That's how strong this stuff is. So now the other thing that everybody's probably heard is a couple of myths for that. The synthetic rope just falls to the ground under load. Okay. You see how much distance it moved? You see how much that it bound up through here? If you have a lot of force on that line and you have full weight of these vehicles going through there, that rope will shoot back in either direction. It may not kill you, but it could welt you. Now one of the things that's neat about this, these fibers again is that we have this broken rope here. And even though it bound up because some of the strands went through here, you can simply straighten that back out and fluff this rope back together. And all of a sudden you have it back in workable condition. So what you do is we're gonna just gonna take one end of the rope and bury it down the other. So again, we're gonna grab onto the end of this wire basket. We're gonna put the end of the rope through here, right? We got these two pieces. And then we're gonna take the end of this line. We're gonna come down here just about 20 inches and take the fid needle and bury it down the center section of the rope. So 12 strand Dyneema has a hollow core. So you can simply go right down through here and push this open, allowing the rope to slide down through there until the rope comes through there. Well, uh, that's a great question. How far do you bury the rope? So with 3 8 Dyneema, you wanna bury it anywhere from 20 to 27 inches. So the easy thing to think about that is that on this tool, there's actually a ruler that will give you the rope bury length uh, based on the diameter of the rope, uh, but it's about three fid lengths for 3 8 rope, which is the most common. So we took the that broken piece, right? We're just burying it down the center section of this first piece of rope. So we got that one piece. This is the piece going back to the Jeep. Now it's gone through here. Take the tool off. And I'm gonna leave the tails out just for the demonstration purposes, just so people can see that. Now on the other end, now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna repeat that process. And now we've got one tail going through one side and one tail going through the other. Now at this point, you can also cheat those things up to be a little closer. But I always like leaving the tails out through here just so everybody can see 
kind of how that's done, right? So that way you can see, this tail's coming from that, this tail's coming from this, and we just put the two pieces right back together, right through here, right? Okay? So now, now that that's done, you can come back to your winch here. And now you're back to retaining full tension on the line again to where you can just put your winch rope right back together and get right back to doing that right on the trail. So if, if there's one thing that you leave this little brief demonstration with is safety, 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 right? It's always about safety. Um, the other one is slow down. I know how it is when you're blocking the trail because you're stuck and you've got 14 Jeeps behind you because you're at Easter Jeeps far and the trails are jammed up. And oh gosh, you know, you're sweating and you guy got to get out of here, I'm just got to do this quickly. But no, slow down, slow down, look at your rigging. Look at what you're using for anchors. Note the, the uh, working load limits on your stuff. Like make sure that your shackles are up for, up for the weight of the vehicle. And always keep people out of the way. Common sense, but I know when you're blocking the trail and all that stuff, you get hyped up and you, your safety starts to become like a second thing. Make it a first thing, put it on the front burner. All right, guys, so there you have it. I thought uh, Justin and Andy did a fantastic job. They taught all the women from the Jesse Combs Foundation and Ethan just how to winch properly. Yeah, it was fun just, you know, again, being able to be included in this group. You know, we picked up the cameras. We were just filming all this happening, and we, like, as filmmakers, like, we had questions too. So it was cool to just be engaged. We asked the questions. You know, we learned from this, and, yeah, it's really useful. So check it out. The Basic Guide to Winching Manual and PDF on Factor 55's website. It is a wealth and plethora of knowledge, and we just scratched the surface. So. Yep. And what's cool about their booklet that you can get on their website, it's great just to stick in your your dash it's a good little reference guide there's lots of different scenarios and uh, they really do a great job of kind of making it so you can understand it and it's just there as a good resource so be sure to check that out so on the next episode we've got the dollar general essentials oh my god y'all i cannot <laughs> i have literally been waiting since easter jeep to get this episode out we had the most fun and it is just hilarious uh steven uh from rubber to the rocks that's his instagram handle and chelsea trail haunter they did a fantastic job. We had so much fun. We gave them $20 and they could only spend it at Dollar General. And uh, it was their take on the $20 um, Dollar General essentials for off-roading. So stay tuned and that's coming up next week. <laughs>